Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video today because we're finally here to see the Void Pickup Summon, which was not on the North American version of the game, and many people saw this one coming because it was on the Korean version of the game, but then now we have a version that is actually different from that one, so I'm going to be talking about this banner and maybe a little bit more of what it could potentially mean. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. There we go. Okay, let's move on. So this is the part two banner. It's got Abby. It's got Summer Melt and Summer Asuka Hibihime. Um, all dudes were who are in the story. And were not featured in any way the last time. It's weird. But maybe I guess they fig figured... I don't know why they did it the way... This is the weirdest banner setup ever, by the way. Two new five stars... No four features at all, and then we have a pickup two that has a five and two fours, and then in the Korean version of the game, it was three, three fives, and uh, a six fours. Crazy. So this is what the banner looks like. It's got Abigail, Sakabahime, Mysterious, Alter Ego, the, the whatever that number is. I forget what it is. So let's go into the, the actual units do. Sakabahime, she is an archer. She has one quick, three arts, one buster. First skill is Marksman FPS B, increase on crit damage, grant self evasion for one attack, one turn, and it's also three attacks for three turns. 50% up in crit damage on a skill cooldown of five. Second skill is Princess Summer Vacation False, 500% chance to inflict taunt status to one enemy for three turns as debuff. Increase party's attack for three turns, grants party ignore evasion for three turns. 300% up and attack up by 20%. Third skill, Great Commander of Chiyogami EX. Increases his own arts performance and buster performance for three turns, 30% and 30%. Real nice when you only have one buster. Sure, I don't know why they do that. Magic resistance B, increase on debuff resistance by 17.5%. Independent action A, increased crit damage, divinity C minus, 145 extra bonus damage. And Fortification Construction B, increases his own art performance by 8% and reduces his own damage taken by 200. And then. Her Noble Phantasm is a buster, deal damage to all enemies, increase um, buster party performance for 3 turns, increase uh, party's crit damage for 3 turns, uh, and yeah, that's this unit. I don't really have much to say about it, it's a weird unit, it's always been a weird unit, and in theory her cooldowns are, no, she doesn't really have a way to increase her NP, so <laughs> it's just nice to look at if you have Osaka Behemoth though, nothing wrong with that, there, pro there are better buster options though in general you really only want this because you want your fps waifu stuff let's then move on to the next unit mysterious and alter Eng uh alter ego penguin it's melt lancer it's lambda that's what the hell this signal signal is uh aka penguin malt her first skill is swan like a increase on arts performance for five turns 20 percent. she has three two arts cards two quicks one buster Second skill is Perfect Fluid B, grant self invincibility for one turn, increase on buff removal resistance for one turn, 500% chance to grant self the water side battlefield buff for three turns, and it's only to her. Buff removal resistance up 100%, if that's a level 10. And Belt NVEX absorbs party's MP gauge except self. The amount of MP drain on the ally is equal to the amount of MP charged by the skill user. Increases zone attack by one turn, MP absorbed is 30% per unit, so you have two units at a 60%. The absorption of the other one is 500% on crit stars, and attack up is 50% for one turn. So, very nice. Passive skill is Magic Resistance B, Riding C, Independent Action EX, Goddess Essence C, and High Servant A. This has no effect at all. Uh, third append skill is a bonus against casters. Noble Phantasm, Blue Summer Paladin, the Summer Dew is like glass. Remove all enemies, evasion buffs on the water side battlefield activates first. It then deals damage that ignores defense buffs to them, and then she also can gain some crit stars. She's an excellent art slooper, and she's great at that, and as long as you want her for that, she's going to be amazing at it. Um, and yeah, she's really, I really like this one because it kind of helps out with a lot of stuff. It's very, it's especially when you're going double Castoria, it's very easy for your Castorias to just have naturally over 30% NP, so... You never run into an issue where you don't have enough on your side, dudes, unless you're, I don't know, in a very dire situation. Uh, one moment real quick. Okay, so yeah, that's Melt. She's really good. 
And then finally, the foreigner is Abby, the first foreigner. The good Abby, Summer Abby, needs a lot of buffs. She has one quick, three arts, and that comes from someone who has an uh, a Summer Abby but does not have regular Abby. And one Buster card. Her first skill is Prayer of the Creed C, and then eventually it turns into Light of the Abyss A, so we'll look at that over that one. Charges party's MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns. Increases party MP damage for three turns. Charges own MP gauge. 30% MP and then 200% damage up. Second skill, Mass Hysteria B, inflicts terror status for one time, three turns to all enemies, activates the buff, has a 500% chance to stun them for one turn. Reduces the defense for three turns, 50% chance activation, defense down is 20%. Third skill, which is Trial A+, reduces one enemy's MP gauge by one, reduces their attack for three turns, 20%. Existence out of, out of the domain EX, Insanity B and Divinity B are her passive skills. Third skill is a bonus against the Berserkers, because of course. And her Noble Phantasm is Quelnif, Rizmon, Hollow Tree, filled with the Remnant of Light. Reduces, removes one enemy's buffs, activates first, and then deals damage to them. It's 600% MP level 1 and 1000 MP level 5, and then the reduce a cat attack chance for one turn is 30% and 70%. And that's all very well good. She's a single target unit that's great at taking down Berserkers, and she's really good at taking down Berserkers. And yeah. That's not more you could really ask for for foreigners. Foreigners were kind of built to take down berserker bosses, and she's very good at taking down berserker bosses. There you go. So, this banner, as I've mentioned before, I think the big threat that a lot of people were wondering is that, yes, we usually do look to the Korean server of the game, if you did not know this, because they're slightly ahead of us. Um, as things have gotten a little bit more unpredictable, we have actually gotten a lot of banners that they've gotten. So a lot of people have been wondering, well, obviously, whatever banner they get, uh, we're going to get eventually. And that was all well and good. <laughs> Up until Korea got a banner where they were announcing Muramasa was coming much earlier than anyone was anticipating. And that made everyone stop and go, what? It was uh, not the... People were already kind of freaking out on this banner because this banner had Summer Artoria on it. It was a big, big banner. Summer... Tomomo, the Yuri Pirates, Maeve, a lot of, like, good summer units that people would want to potentially summon for. Or, or well-liked summer units that people would want to summon for. Like, I know Yuri Pirates have their specific fans, but their the unit itself is not the greatest. And I say that as someone who has them and has used them a whole bunch. Uh, but this is a pretty big change from there, so that makes me feel like, hey, we probably aren't... We probably... I mean, there's still, like, the... I, it, it went from there being a 50% chance of us getting Muramasa for Thanksgiving to it going down to about, I think it's a 10% for me, personally. It's more of one of those things of, like, I don't think it's happening anymore. Um, just because they've changed the banner on this one means that we won't be getting the same. And thankfully, someone over on the actual Reddit of it has an explanation for this. And I read this and I went, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So what we learned out of the KR banners is that they do they do have disclaimers at the very bottom of those disclaimers stating Korean original banner. That mean NA will get parts of the banner, but not the full banner. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I made a detailed post, a sort of rundown of the extra banner list a few days ago. As so far as the Korean original disclaimer has been used twice, once for the Solomon stage banner and now for the extra scramble banner. For both of them, we got parts, but not the full banner other banners that didn't have that specified disclaimer we got fully just pointing out this for future extra banner kr shows off servants and bold are ones in kr that na got in for the korean original banner and we can here see it's gil ozzy merlin kualter and kid dude da vinci caster and then the na version just had gil and ozzy and then everything else was the same for the extra scramble extra banner they had artoria Tamamo, Lancer, Ab uh, Abigail, Maeve, and Bonnie Marie, Reed, Osaka Bahime, and Melt. And they ha I thought they had two more than us. I guess they didn't. Um, and we just got Abby and Osaka Bahime and Melt. So there we go. It means that we will, chances are, have to be paying a little bit more attention. Let me see if he goes into it here because I didn't see this one. The banners were. Because this was supposed to do November schedule. Uh, the good of four banner. Uh, okay, what I noticed is that the Korean and North America are more or less communicating for the banners. It seems given that the banners are based off each other. 
Korea has some of the banners that are based on NA that happened very shortly after NA got them, and two banners where they were saying original, which includes the scramble ones. Something weird happened in the case of the second Gouda rerun banner, and it says it's based on NA's April 24th banner. But KR's banner released four days prior to that, and NA only had the news and the banner up on April 24th. So the light label makes no sense outside of KR and NA working together to bring some extra banners. The Gouda 4 banner is Santa Claus Solomon stage. In the end, we did share 5, maybe 4.5 because of Solomon thing, extra banners with KR so far. I wouldn't be surprised if the label wouldn't mean too much, but that's there, of course. I think the label only means it's something KR came up with and started, which wouldn't stop NA from simply adding it to their campaign, but maybe not the full banner or parts of it, like with Solomon banner. So, with that, very interesting for sure, as we look at the specific schedule that they have. Um... Yeah, I still don't think it's very likely that it happens now. It still could happen. You know, you never know in that case. But I think for the most part, you're probably good to keep on saving, and I would suggest you continue to keep saving. Especially for someone who's looking big for Muramasa. He's definitely a big... I'm really going to be interested to see what Korea ends up choosing for New Year's now, because it's like... Who represents New Year's now that Muramasa has been moved way the hell up? It's not a lot of newish dudes. I guess Avenger Ushi is your best bet, but I don't know how well liked in Korea specifically. I know how much he is in JP and NA, but for them specifically, I don't know how much Ushi's like. If you're actually someone who plays the Korean server the version of the game, I would be happy to hear about that. But yeah, there we go. If you're someone looking to summon on your snake corners that you badly want Abby, this is probably not the version of the banner that a lot of people want. If I'm going to be real with you, most people don't want Abby, the foreigner version. I like Abby, but not many people want this specific version. Um, Osaka Be though she is the better of the two Abbies, I'll say. Osaka Behime, like I said, doesn't really set the world on fire with what she does. And Melt is definitely the one that's probably the best one. It is the most popular one featured on here. Actually, it'd probably be somewhere between her and Abby. Abby is extremely popular, for sure. Not to discredit the popularity of that, but anyway. And or Ahsoka Behemoth. So, to be fair, I actually don't know how popular she is over there. She seems to be like the female Blackbeard, so I'm going to assume very popular. Because why not? But yep, yeah, that's the end of today's video, man. If you are end up summoning, I wish you the best of luck. I'm not summoning, so don't expect it. Mainly because I don't have anything to summon with. And I'm saving for Ibuki. So, yeah, you guys have a good day. Have a good night. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.